peaches and welcome to today's video and welcome back so you may have noticed if you guys have been subscribed here for a while that it took a little time off and the last video I uploaded was telling you guys that we are moving and leaving LA honestly I haven't posted anything because we moved in and I kind of wanted to do everything at once because I was working on all the rooms at once it kind of took me a little bit to get everything in order enough to be able to have enough content to create a video to share with you guys the first space I want to show you guys is our patio if you couldn't tell by the title so in this video I'm going to share with you guys three different DIYs all super affordable all super simple to do and like with very minimal materials but make such a huge impact on top of the fact I'm just going to show you guys me arranging my furniture that I found and I'm going to tell you in the video where I got it all, how much I spent on it all, and at the end of it I'll do a price breakdown for what we spent. Without further ado, let's get into it. To start us off, I wanted to show you guys what we're working with. It's a good size, lots of potential. So the first thing we bring out is this big couch. We found it at Goodwill, brand new from Target, never used for $160, and it's perfect for the space. Then I laid down a little simple rug that works for out here. It's an indoor-outdoor rug that I just happen to have, and I wanted to use it somewhere, and I like how neutral it is for the space. Then we brought out two of these chairs. Also, we got at Goodwill, such a find. We got these for $60 a piece, and again, they're brand new from Target. And then this I found at Goodwill for $15, and I like that it has drawers so we can have a little storage out here with this marble countertop. On that countertop, I decided I wanted a little cement fire pit. So we're going to make one. This is our first DIY of this video. It's super simple, and it only costs about $20 to make a cement fireplace which is so cool so here I am just pouring some cement in I just did it in little batches and all you do for cement if you've never worked with it is you just add some water to it now I know there's special measurements but I also just heard that if you mix it into a consistency like peanut butter then it will be just fine so that's basically what I did so the other thing you're gonna need in addition to cement is a set of bowls at least two one big one the size that you want your fire pit to be which here I'm using this big green one and then one other bowl that's like slightly smaller they usually come in sets so the first thing you want to do is take some cement and put it at the bottom of the bowl and press it down you want to have a thick enough layer so that when you put your smaller bowl inside the bottom of your smaller bowl will be hitting the cement so you're gonna fill the gap underneath it I wanted to show you guys a close-up of like the good consistency so it's really like a peanut butter type of I could spread this on toast but it's not a cake mix you know so once you get that consistency and you have your little bowl into your big bowl with the base of cement in the big bowl already then you want to take a spatula or a knife or honestly just your fingers if you don't mind getting dirty and you want to just push that between both bowls you can also before you put the second bowl in the smaller bowl you can like pull the cement up on the sides ours was a little watery so it's kind of hard to get it to stay but this just is the best method that we found that really worked for us and it takes a little bit of time but you just keep going until you get all the way to the top around the entire border now it's going to want to lift up and like float almost so in order to keep your bowl actually pressed down into the big one all you have to do is put something heavy so we just took a piece of wood on top of the bowls and that was heavy enough but you could also use books or clamps or really whatever you have laying around but if it's something you care about make sure you're using something to protect it so it doesn't get messed up with the cement now you want to let it set for about 24 to 48 hours the longer obviously the harder it will be before you remove it and then some people can just plop it right out and we had to literally break the bowls but because we bought them from the 99 cent store we really didn't mind now I do know there's easier ways to do this this is our first time working with cement but if I were to do it again then I'm pretty sure you can put saran wrap over your bowl so it pops out easier we just sanded down the top to make it level with the outside bowl and then we also just sanded down the center because obviously you saw ours was a strainer so there was a little bit of weirdness there but once we had it sanded down pretty smoothly it doesn't have to be perfect we then peeled off 
the outside. Again, use saran wrap. I'm sure it will make it easier. Anything would probably be easier than this, but honestly, it wasn't too bad. It just sucks if you like the bowls that you're using, so I'd recommend getting ones that you're not too fond of. But anyways, because this was our first time using cement, as you can see, we had a few air bubbles, and to avoid that, you just tap your cement before you let it harden, and that should get rid of it. So try that when you do this. As you can tell, I was very excited that we finally got the cement free from those bowls and I was happy with how it was looking. Now that we had it free, I just went back with the sandpaper one more time along the top, trying to make it as level as possible. Again, not worrying about it being perfect. And then we are ready to fill it. So I got a few different options for how we are gonna start our fire. So these ones are basically like burners that you use when you're serving food and they're very little. And then this is the bigger size of that. Both of these I got at Walmart. There's a single size for the big ones and then a three pack for the little ones. And I got both just to see which fit better in my bowl. Once you know what size you're using, then I just went in with lava rocks. I got these from Home Depot and I just poured them in. And then I just went back through and pulled out like the very large ones that didn't fit in the bowl. And now I'm ready to light it up. So I just brought it outside. I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. I think it looks so expensive, yet it was so easy and so affordable. Then it was time to move on to lights. I got these string lights from Amazon. I'll link them down below for you guys. I'll link everything that I talk about that I can in the description. And I already had hooks outside from like a previous tenant, but if not, you could just use some command hooks and put them into your ceiling. Then I brought out this artificial tree in this cute little planter and I added a blanket to add some cozy vibes to the space along with a pillow to complete the look. For our next DIY, all you need is a pot, some string, and some scissors. And once you have your pot, you just want to see how far down you want it to hang. And then once you have your length, you just want to fold it into four different strings. And then once you have all four of those, you're going to cut that off. And on one side, you're going to have a loop with two strings make sure you cut that single loop and not the double loop on the other end you're going to have a double loop and you're going to tie that into a knot and then you get cute little hanging plants so that's what the knot will look like once you do it at this point you should have your loop on the top and then four strands and you want to separate those into two sections and figure out how far down you want your pot to sit like the top of it and once you figure that out you can kind of keep your finger in the hole so that you can like decide where you want the knot to end up and then on your second set of strings you're going to want to tie a knot to make them parallel you want them at the as close as possible to the same height again use your finger to kind of guide where you want that knot and I like to triple tie them so that the knots are a little bit bigger and more visible and also just so they're a little bit sturdier because obviously they have to support the weight of your pot. Once you have your knots in place, then you're going to take one from each little section so you're bringing them cross over and you want to measure just to see how far you want your next set of knots. So you want to make sure not to use the two strings that have already been tied together but instead one from each and it's a lot easier when you have something anchoring this whole rope contraption down and then you want to take the two freestanding ropes and tie those together so a repeat of the first set of knots except instead of you just want to change up you know one from each section then you want to just pull them apart make sure nothing's tangled everything's looking good and then you want to tie one more knot now this will have all four and it will go underneath the bottom two knots you just secured now there's lots of different variations of this but this is just what i find to be the most simple and quick to do and provides a very similar result to other similar ones that have way more knots and so then you just want to put that big four rope knot on the bottom and pull up and i honestly really like how it looks you want to make sure that your knots fit your pot before tugging and <laughs> too tight and cutting the ends but once you know it fits then you can tug really tight to make sure that those knots are secure once i know it fits now it's time to put the plant into the pot first i kind of see how big it is if i'm going to need extra dirt or less dirt and if i need less dirt basically you just want to kind of 
poke into the soil to let it crumble off instead of ripping off all of the roots because if you just poke at it, the roots will kind of bend and you're not destroying your plant. Once you get it to the right size, then just repot it. And I like to push it down a little bit deeper so it's a little bit lower than the edge of the pot. And then I just go in and fill with any extra soil left over. And then now my new plant is completely potted and I just go in. This is the best way and easiest way I found to actually get the pot into the pot holder. <laughs> if you have a second person who can hold the rope up and keep it tight, it makes it a lot easier. But if not, this way works too. And then I just go around and I separate all of the strings and I just make sure that the plant is able to go through all the holes and just is gonna sit nicely. And now they're ready to be hung. I just used the same hooks that were already there, but if you weren't doing lights, those same hooks work just the same for hanging your plants. And I really like this method because you can pick your planter and the plant size that you really want and then create a hanger for it that fits exactly the plant you picked out. Now I still have this little corner that you see right when you walk out on the patio and I also had this weird thing. I honestly don't know what it is. If you do, leave in the comments because I don't know the actual intention for it. But I like that it was wood and I thought it would make the best planter. So I just took some soil, poured it in the bottom and I realized that I didn't want these flap things. So I just took a screwdriver and unscrewed it and I took a sanding block and just went over where it was connected to make it look a little bit cleaner. And then I thought it would be perfect to make a little herb garden honestly you can get herbs so cheap and so many places sell them i think the best deal is probably at the 99 cent store they sell a large variety of different herbs or whole foods sells them or home depot sells them they're available everywhere and at least here in california these have been growing like wildflowers they will not stop growing and i literally just water them once a day and they sit outside in the sun and they are happy and i have fresh herbs to cook with and it is so amazing and so then i just put it in this little spot and you can see even from that first video to now how much they have grown they honestly add so much life to the space comments if you're going to try any of those DIYs. I am going to do a price breakdown for you guys as promised at the beginning of the video. Before we get into exact numbers, I just want to say that I found all of my furniture that I'm using for my patio at Goodwill. So when you guys are doing your spaces, I really encourage you, especially with patio furniture because it is so expensive, to look at thrift stores, to check Facebook Marketplace. As I always say, you know, one you're saving the environment too you're getting such a good deal so without a further ado here is the breakdown okay so for the two-seater bench that was $160 from Goodwill for the set of two chairs each chair was 60 so a total of 120 the little table I found at Goodwill as well for $15 now the rug and the like makeshift planter that I'm using as a planter both of those were actually gifted to me and I got for free now for the herbs, I got six different herbs for that planter and they were roughly about $4 a piece, bringing us to $24. For the hanging plants, again, I just kind of averaged them. It really depends on what plants you prefer and how many you want of them. But I got four plants averaging about $10 a plant, making it $40 for the hanging plants. And then for those rattan pots, I got four of those at $7 a piece, making that total $28. The rope that I used for the DIY that we did for the hanging portion of it cost, I think, like $3, and I have plenty extra to use on future projects. 
the total cost of the fire pit was $20 and so the concrete cost $4, the lava rocks cost $8, the bowls that I actually used to create the mold cost $5 and then the actual little fire burners cost $3. Now the only thing about that is obviously that's something that you use so you'd have to continuously buy the fire part of it but those are only about three dollars the artificial tree is from ikea that cost me fifty dollars and then the basket i found that fit it cost me three dollars from goodwill and then the blanket and the pillow both cost me two dollars each from goodwill as well and then the string lights cost me $25 for 22 feet. That's what I found worked best for me that length, but different lengths obviously are different prices. With that said, for every single thing in this space, the grand total was $491. I think that it's perfect for our space. This works for any small patio and all of those DIYs can really be applied in any space. But I wanna hear your thoughts. If you guys have any other ideas for me, anything else that you think I should add, let me know. I just ask you guys to be patient with me as I release videos. You know what they say, quality over quantity, and I really wanna make sure that I'm putting as much energy and love into the spaces to provide you guys really good content rather than just rushing through it to slap something onto YouTube. So with that said, I just ask you guys to be patient. I am working as much as I can on this while life is still going on around me. And if you guys missed it, I did a whole empty house tour last week. So if you want to see the space that we're working on, then go check that out. I'll link it down below for you as well. Don't forget to turn that bell icon on so that you get notified every single time I post so you don't miss the next video. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and hit subscribe down below to see more of me. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!